Hey guys, welcome to Woodwork Life. Today we're building Schrodinger's box with what I'm going to call the quantum dovetails. I'm going to make them look a little something like this. It's basically a really overcomplicated dovetailed spline miter joint. This is a pretty straightforward markup. They're basically just compound and dovetail joints. You just need to pay attention to the negative space between them. The inspiration for this box was the Schrodinger's box paradox. In 1935, Austrian physicist Erwin Schrodinger posed a paradox mocking the popular theory of quantum mechanics. A cat was placed inside a sealed box with a vial of poison, a radioactive isotope, and a machine that would shatter the vial of poison if it detected radiation. Because there was no way to confirm if the cat was dead or alive without opening the box, the theoretical cat was now in a state called quantum superposition, illustrating the quantum uncertainty principle. Now, we're not putting any cats in this box, and certainly no radioactive materials. But I kind of like the idea of closing some uncertainty up in a box. And if I'm going to be inspired by quantum mechanics, I might as well make a fun dovetail. Thus the quantum dovetails. There's a lot of easier ways this could have been done with a router jig or whatever you had around, but I decided to try these out by hand. Now I've never tried this before, but I think it might be harder to match up the negative space in a dovetail than it is to actually get a perfectly fitting dovetail. The most critical part of the fit is really just to have good clean baselines. So I made sure to clear out, not quite to my baseline, and then clear it up with a chisel. I already went over a lot of these techniques in my dovetail video, so I'll go ahead and link to that here. But these aren't really a traditional dovetail. The only practice you really get is cutting a flat baseline and just using the tools and becoming more comfortable with the overall process. Using chisels, using your coping saw, we ain't talking about your the mallet, game. We're talking about practice, it's man. just practice. Now usually all these facets are hidden underneath the joining piece of wood. So with this they're actually going to be exposed. So I wanted to make sure to not tear any fibers and really go slowly at it and clean up all my lines with nice clean pairing cuts. The other nice thing about this joint is there's no real fitting to do. You can lay out all your joints ahead of time and just cut to your heart's desire. The real important part is the spacing. You don't have to worry about cutting to fit so much. It's just cutting a good looking angle. The original idea for these actually came for me from a post that you guys have probably all seen on Facebook where someone had accidentally cut out the the tails instead of the waist. Uh, it's really a true lesson to mark your waist, but this was kind of an idea on something you could do to salvage a joint like that. I've done it before, I'm sure everybody's done it when they're trying to cut out a joint, is forget to mark your waist and accidentally cut off your tails instead of cutting out the negative space. And of course, while doing this joint, inspired by that, I somehow managed to do that. So I guess, word of the wise, mark your waist. Don't, 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 don't. Unfortunately with this joint, you don't have the flexibility to try to correct it. So I chopped off those tails and I guess I have a slightly smaller box now and I learned to mark my waist. I've been watching a lot of Peter Brown's channel lately, and he does some amazing things with epoxy. You should really check him out. I'll link to his channel here. I wanted to try my hand at it, and this seemed like a perfect project. I knew I'd have to pin these joints since there wasn't actually any mating surface. So I temporarily set them up with some CA glue to kind of make a mold for the epoxy pins. I purposely left these a little bit proud so that I could tune the fit of the joints a little bit before I sanded them down. I would normally hit these with the hand plane, but since there was no supporting material, they would just bust out all over the place since I was just going after end grain anyway. So I it was, made quick work with them with some 80 grit sandpaper. 
before you pour the epoxy, this is really your last chance to tune up any of the negative spaces between the joints. Like I said, these are essentially just spline miters, so if you need to run your saw through to even up some uneven negative space, go ahead and do that now. And after that, it's time to mask for the epoxy. I was pretty sloppy with this the first time around. Don't rush this step. It'll pay off later. I bought some cheap epoxy from Home Depot. I should have probably ordered something like West Systems I see everybody using. I'll probably try that on future projects, but this worked alright. It just took a long time to set up, and when it set up, it was still kind of gummy. Maybe I did something wrong. Either way. So I wasn't too careful with it. I wasn't trying to get a crystal clear epoxy set. I actually wanted some of the bubbles. But I did use a lighter on the surface to get a nice smooth surface so you could see through it. You can see here where all the extra epoxy I had to pour to fill those spots since it was all leaking out really hurt me. Like I said, take your time with that. It'll really pay off. In sanding and in all the extra epoxy pour you'll have to do. For this size box, there's really no need to inset the top or bottom of the box. The edge grain glue joint will be plenty strong enough. I just tuned up the glue joint a little bit with some sandpaper and then just stuck on the top. I left a big overhang so I could trim it up later with my trim router to even up the edges. I let the glue cure overnight and then the next day I took my trim router and just trimmed off the excess. You could have done some sandpaper, a hand plane, whatever. The trim router was just really easy. Now let's turn this box into sort of a totem of uncertainties in life. So there are over 2.5 million combinations of five card hands you can deal yourself in a game of five card stud. And only one in every 650,000 hands is a royal flush. So let's deal ourselves five cards. You never know what hand life will deal you, so play the hand you're dealt. And we'll put the extra cards in here just so we won't peek. We'll also throw in these unscratched lottery tickets. Could be winners or losers, who knows? We won't let luck control our fortunes. Now for the cherry on top, we'll flip a coin. We'll never know if it's heads or tails. There are so many things that are down to just chance and luck. Now that our box is full of uncertainty, let's finish it. I put a little round over on it and took it up to the grits of sandpaper for 220. Then I wet sanded the epoxy up to 1200 grit. David Picciuto just had a pretty cool video on finishing with shellac. I want to try out his technique, so I use it on this project. I tweaked it a little bit, but overall it was basically what his video is about. So I'll link to his video here. It's, it's a pretty cool technique. In his video, he only finishes up to 240 grit sandpaper, and then he burnishes it. I went up to 1000 grit because I wanted a little bit smoother finish on the epoxy, and then I burnished it with some uh, paste wax. Overall, I love how this box turned out. It's really cool, there's a little sparkle within the dovetails whenever they catch the light just the right way. Otherwise, they just look like wood in the joints. It's really unique, you have two faces meeting, yet you have three facets that are connecting them. You could have easily just cut a spline miter, but I wanted to go a little bit over the top. Little box projects like this are always really fun. They're quick and easy projects you can just throw together with scrap you have laying around your shop. If you try a Schrodinger's box quantum dovetail thing, let me know in the comments below so I can check it out. If you like this video, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And if you really like this video, please take a second to consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to help support my channel, if you're going to buy something off Amazon, just do so with the Amazon links below. It'll help out just a little. I'd really appreciate it. So thanks for watching today with Woodwork Life. And remember to keep your tools sharp and to keep your mind even sharper.